We just got done doing our review of the Fanatic, and I cannot think of any time in our multi years of reviewing films that I've had to immediately make such a huge leap from hate to love. <laughs> um, I don't even know if my body can pull off this maneuver, but we're going to give it a shot. Hey everyone, it's me, Aaron. And I'm Michelle. And this is the quest for the best, in which we are looking back at some of the best films of the previous year. And today we're talking about 1917, which I went into this film, you didn't see this one. Just yeah, I film. wanted to, but like, I have school, so yep. I can't really go and see every movie you see. Uh, yeah, and I think that you would actually dig this. I don't know how much you're into war films. I don't, like, not really, but it's like... From what I've seen of 1970, it does look very interesting, like... Yeah, uh, it's a very simple story in here, and it's it's a story of these two British soldiers in World War One, and they have to go from their division with a letter from their commanding officer because they find out that a, another division, they're about to make this big push into enemy territory, they've got the Germans on the run, but they found out that it's a trap, and if they do this push, they're all going to die. So they now have to go out there, just the two of them, mm -hmm. cross across unknown terrain into enemy territory to go and deliver this lair in order to stop uh, this, uh, stop these troops from going out there and getting killed. And the fact that one of them has a brother who is part of these troops, that, that adds extra tension to it because it means, holy crap, not only are these you know, nameless soldiers in this film going to die, but someone who is connected to one of the named soldiers that I am following as an audience member. So, oh, there's extra stakes in there. And it takes a lot for me to love a war film simply because I've seen a lot of them. And eventually you get to that point where you're just like, yeah, I know what's going to happen. Like, you kind of need to give me something a little bit new in here. Like, give me some kind of a twist on this. And story-wise, there's really not a lot of twists or anything in here. Uh, but production-wise, this thing is a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. Production-wise, this thing is incredible because they try to shoot this to make it look like it's all one shot. Yeah. Although I will say there is one moment in the middle of this where there is a very clear cut. But there's also a ton of cheats in here, which of course is going to be a ton of yeah. cheats. You're not going to have someone walk around for an hour if they screw up at the last second and you got to do all of it over again. <laughs> um... But there are tons of cheats in here, and I've seen a handful of films that try and do the whole, okay, we're going to make it all look like it's one shot, but you know there's got to be a few little tricks that we pull in here. But this one is loaded with special effects, and because it's loaded with special effects, it was really obvious how many times they were using cheats in here. Uh, and because of that, the whole one shot thing, it didn't really have that much of an effect on me in terms of the overall story. In terms of sequences, it actually worked brilliantly for me. And what I mean by that is that when you do something as one shot, you're trying to make it feel like, oh man, we went from there to here. We made this one long journey and you were there for every single second of it. I didn't quite get that feeling in there. But because they still, even with those cheats in there, they still had a lot of long shots in here. They would still go for like five minutes without a single cut in there, and without a single cheat in there. That did get me engaged. That did make me feel immersed in what was happening in here. And yeah, that absolutely worked. So, you know, for like, say, the entire overall film, that feeling of us being with them throughout this entire journey, eh, it didn't quite work all that much. But the feeling of, okay, this sequence here in this one house at this one location, wow, that is incredibly tense. I was immensely invested in every part of this. I'm trying to think of other words to say other than incredibly. Mm -hmm. um, like, there was, um, like, I was uh, on Twitter, and, like, they show, like, a behind-the-scenes with a uh, part uh, in the movie, mm -hmm. and it was the part where, like, he was, like, uh running down uh, the uh, field while all the troops are coming out. Yeah, that's an amazing sequence. Yeah, right? and it's like, wow, like, no special effects. Like, those were real explosions. Yeah. That Listen, was... <laughs> there are a lot of special effects that are used in this, but there's also a lot of practical effects that are used in here. And those moments are incredible, and that, because that was one of the sequences in here that did not use special effects, it felt so much more real to me. Yeah. I mean, that last moment there where 
the guy is running, he's like, I gotta get this letter delivered, and you see troops running past, you see explosions going up. That is one of the most heroic moments I have seen for a character in any film. I was sitting there just, <gasps> like, on the edge of my seat. I love that sequence, and part of that has to do with that, with the fact that that is towards the end of the film. And this is a film that really does establish, this is war. Mm-hmm. Anything can happen at any moment. Like, I'm not going to go into any spoilers about that, but, like, there's a moment early on, early on in here, in which they see a thing. And the moment they see that, I went, oh my goodness, that could end up being a thing. That could be a thing that we have to look out for. And then, like, before I can even finish that thought, bam, the thing that they go, oh my gosh, it's this, the, that thing that they just looked at, it does the thing it's supposed to do. I'm trying to be super big on this. <laughs> you don't want to go any spoilers. But yeah, it's one of those things where, like, the moment that you see it, you're like, okay, well, that's going to be a thing. Oh, it was already a thing. <laughs> it has happened. This is a film that turns to you and goes, oh, we don't we don't follow that, like, traditional storyline stuff. We don't follow that stuff. Uh, like, like it, this isn't foreshadowing shadowing for, like, half an hour from now. This is foreshadowing, like, two seconds, two seconds from, from now. now. <laughs> Yeah, when you are in a scene, you are in that scene. Yeah, this is one of those movies where you don't know what is going to happen to anyone in here. There is a moment early on in this film where one of the characters, he's trying to pull barbed wire back, and then the barbed wire snaps on and, like, cuts up his hand. And that's, like, the least bad thing that happens to any of them. <laughs> but I love that because after that happens to him, he wraps his hand up with some bandages, and it didn't hit me until like an hour later in this film. He's still got those bandages on his hand and they are now dirty. They are like shredded up and it kind of gives you that feeling of this is how far that character has gone throughout this story. That is how much they have had their asses kicked on this journey from A to B. Uh, this is like if you had a movie about Sam and Frodo having to make it all the way up Mount Doom and you condensed all that into an hour and a half. Just all the terrible shit that happened to them in that time, all in an hour and a half and all made to look like one shot. Uh, I'm sorry for taking this actual real thing that happened and the only way that I could turn it into a metaphor for people was comparing it to a fictional thing that happened. Um, but yeah, this, it it's like that level of tension though. Um, and I can't think of really a lot else to say about this film that wouldn't get into spoilery stuff in here, but as I said, there are special effect moments in here. Like there will be a moment where they stop and they look at a dogfight that's happening in the air, and the camera then like it turns away from them and turns up at the planes flying around, and then you know it turns back to them. And you know obviously that was a cut. Obviously those are not real planes. Obviously this was like them on a green screen, and they use that moment there in order to get a cut in. And it's stuff like that get, that kind of made it so that I could actually sit there and go, oh yes, this is that huge technological achievement. But it is still a technological achievement, and even if I can look at that and go, these are special effects, they're really good special mm -hmm. effects. Like, they are walking through, uh, it's almost like an elephant graveyard for bullets. Like, they're walking around, and they're just seeing, like, shells just scattered everywhere. They're seeing busted up tanks, busted up guns just everywhere around them, and it is a gorgeous scene that they were able to create there. I know it's not a real scene. I know it's not an actual thing. I know they're walking across the green screen, but holy crap, it looks fantastic. And any time that they actually are on a real thing, it feels real. It feels like, holy crap, they were able to build this thing. There's a moment in which they are walking through um, a, uh, an emptied out base. And they're going there looking for anybody who might still be inside of there. And it's all underground. And you are just holding your breath because you feel like someone could jump out and attack them at any moment. They could trip over something that would set off something else. This entire thing could cave in around them. You don't know what is going to happen to them, but you are that tense throughout this entire sequence. And that's largely this entire film. This entire film is just you going from one really amazing location to another. And even when you're looking at it going, well, that's clearly not a town. That's clearly not this. You're clearly in a green screen right now. It still feels so amazing that you don't care. Yeah, it's like I've always believed that practical effects will always be better than digital effects, but I understand practical effects have their limits. Mm. So if you... Yeah, there's a moment in which they get to a town that has been completely destroyed. And yeah, of course they didn't build this entire, like, early 1900s town and then blow the crap out of it. 
but wow, is it a gorgeous looking city. And as I mentioned, yes, there are clear cuts in there, but a lot of the time they will go like five minutes without any kind of a cut in there, and that plays masterfully against some of these sequences that they're in, because you'll have this character going through a town that is just engulfed in flames, and it's all been destroyed, and there's smoke, and there's gunfire in the background, and yeah, it's just one long shot of him just walking from one building to the next, just walking in between every single little spot that he can hide to get around the enemies, and you're just sitting there just engulfed in everything that's going on in this. Like, it's just consuming you. You feel like you are there, but even if you did have that feeling of immersion, it just looks so beautiful that you just want to stop for a moment and just stare at this stuff. But they never let you get comfortable. Even when stuff is gorgeous to look at, even when you're like, oh man, I just want to soak this in, they remind you everyone around every corner wants our two protagonists dead. Mm -hmm. They want to kill them. Yeah. So you are constantly just going back and forth between, oh my god, it's so pretty, and it's terrifying at the same time. Uh, yeah. And I want to go into, like, specific details. I want to go into, like, specific moments in here, but I can't. Uh, but I will just let you know, yeah, they do not shy away from how bloody and brutal war is. I mean, there's a moment early on in this film. I don't feel like this one's too much of a spoiler because it's one of the first things that happens to them, which, again, I have to stress, this is one of the first things that happens to them. They fall down into the hole, and the hole, it's not just that there's dead bodies in there. There have been dead bodies that got put in there, and then just there were mudslides and stuff. So you'll see like half a face just sticking out of the ground. And you look at that and think, this is the kind of thing that you would typically expect out of a horror sequence. It's not out of a horror sequence. It's out of a war movie. And you absolutely buy, oh my god, these poor guys. They are stuck in this terrible, well, terrible situation. Well, war is very horrible. Yes. So, so it fits. It absolutely it fits. Like, you never look at any of this and you're like, oh, I bet it wasn't like that. No, you look at it like, oh my god, I can't believe it was like that. That is horrifying. <laughs> It puts you right there in that situation. Um, but there are, like, there are moments in here that almost feel like it's out of a dream. Like, there are moments, it's not just terrible situation, terrible situation, terrible situation, terrible situation, because then the audience will eventually get numb. They do, every now and again, put in, like, a breather. They yes. do put in there a moment for the audience to just go, ah, oh, this is all right. But it's all there just so that way they can swing back around with another terrible thing that's going to happen. It's horror logic. It's what I've always said about horror movies. You have to know how to balance hope. And this is not a horror movie, but it is more tense than almost any horror film I saw this year. Like, that lot, that, your, your logic also applies to, like, war movies, honestly. Yeah, it absolutely so. does. Anything where you have to constantly drill into the audience's head, this is a bad situation, that's what you got to do. You got to put that breather in there. And this movie knew exactly when to put the breathers in there. And the breathers would look gorgeous. There's a moment where the characters there are walking through this forest after this horrible thing has happened to them. And it really feels like if fairies start floating around in front of them or like, you know, a Studio Ghibli deer just crossing <laughs> in front of them. You would buy it. You would absolutely buy it. Like, if plants started, like, blooming in front of them with amazing fruits that you've never seen in your entire life, and colors that, like, this, uh, and colors the likes of which you've never seen before just started appearing on screen, you'd buy it. You would absolutely believe it because the scene looks so gorgeous. But it might just look gorgeous because the last thing that you experienced was one of the most horrifying things you've ever had to witness. So at this moment, anything would look beautiful to you. Uh, yeah, this movie, it goes back and forth between just gorgeous, horrifying sequences and moments that almost feel like dreams because they are just so uplifting and so relaxing, but they're not they're not uplifting and relaxing because that's what the scene is. It's just that it's a nice moment that's shot well compared to the horrible moments that were shot well. Uh, yeah, I can't really keep talking about this film in terms of the plot, because there really isn't a lot of plot in here. Yeah, At least not stuff that it wouldn't be spoilery. Uh, and you don't want to spoil it. And this. I don't want to spoil it, because, yeah, this is a simple story. It's get from A to B, deliver this letter before everyone dies. That's it. But you do get backstories on these characters. You do, uh, like, one of the characters doesn't want to wear a medal they got. 
and you find out why he doesn't want to wear that medal. And then another guy, he's the guy who he's got a brother who's there uh, on this uh, yeah, that's with about, him. Yeah. That's about to go off and die. And you get little bits about his family and his backstory. And you see the contrast between them. And you do absolutely buy that these guys are brothers. You do buy that, I don't mean the guy and his actual brother. I mean our two protagonists. You buy that these are guys who they have been through some stuff. And they care about each other. And they're important to each other. Uh, and when you witness the stuff that they're going through, you you absolutely understand why they care about each other that much. Uh, you do buy this bond between them, even though, like I said, it's not... There isn't even really like a lot of dialogue between these two guys who we see walking around this entire time. Because they're constantly in situations where we're like, shut up, shut up. Mm -hmm. shut, mm, no, we're not doing this. There could and, be enemy here. <laughs> yeah, uh, enemy is approaching. Uh, <laughs> five points to anybody who gets that reference. Uh, uh, so, um, I was about to say something that I made a terrible joke. Uh... I seriously forgot what I was going to say. Anyway, uh, but yeah, oh, no, no, I, now I remember. Um, yeah, like I said, there isn't even, like, a lot of dialogue between these two characters who you spend the film with, but there doesn't need to be because this film was able to use the action to show you mm -hmm. the connection that they have. They didn't yeah. need the words for it. This is one of the best examples of showing and not telling I've ever yeah. seen in a film. Which I feel like more movies need to do, honestly. Yeah, really. which, but, I mean, it's hard to do It that. is. And that's another reason why I have to applaud this film, because, like, yeah, it's hard. And they did it <laughs> really well. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to end it there, but I'm going to say, god damn. This thing, it starts off slow, but like, I'd say by the time they get to the second location that they're going to in here, out of like 10 locations, it starts ramping up and it never stops. It never stops. It'll slow down for a moment, but it'll always slow down so that you, the audience, can kind of just sit there and go, oh my yeah, god. Like what catch I, your breath. What did I just witness? Holy crap. And what I love is that that's what the characters are going through, too. Like, there's a moment in which they witness something terrible, and then they'll meet someone, and that someone will just be like, you know, you don't got time to stop. You don't have time. Sorry. We got to keep going. And they got to keep going. Just like you, the audience. You want to stop? You want to go, I need a moment, because that was too intense for me. Nope. Movie keeps going, man. Movie keeps on Movie's going. Movie's not over yet. Yeah. Uh, and that was another thing they did like about this. It's not just the two guys. I did mention that they run into people from now from time to time. Yeah, every now and again, they will bump into someone. And it almost makes us feel like the Odyssey, almost. Because it's like, we're just going from one location to the next with a different trial in every location, and there's a different person there to meet, and sometimes they want to help us, sometimes they want to hurt us. I love... Wow, this really... It's like the Odyssey is what this is. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, so I, it started out kind of slow, and I was like, I don't know if I'm really going to dig this as much as everyone else, because I'm already spawning a lot of cheats in here, so the whole one camera thing is not working for me all that much. Not one camera, but one take thing, it's not working for me all that much. But like I said, quickly, this thing ramps up, and man, by the end of this, this was close to a 10 out of 10 for me. This, I'm going to give it a 9.5. The only reason I'm not giving it a 10, point, uh, 10 out of 10 is because, like I said, the cheats are really obvious at times, and because of that, the whole one-shot thing, it doesn't work in terms of the, we went on this one journey from here to here. Although I will say, whenever I looked at that guy's bandage, I did stop and think to myself, wow, all the stuff that these guys have been through. Wow, imagine, what, remember what they were like at the beginning of this film? Think about where they are right now. So it did work a little bit, but that's more in terms of just the storytelling, mm -hmm. not the way that it was shot. I feel like I would have gotten that feeling out of this movie, no matter how it was shot. But the whole one-shot thing, giving me that sense that I traveled along this entire path with these characters, didn't quite work. But, whenever they give you like five minutes of no cuts through one crazy action sequence in here, or one incredibly intense sequence, or one very sweet sequence between these characters, yeah. Absolutely works. It absolutely works to get me engaged in that sequence there. So overall film, not so much. As a series of sequences, love those series of sequences. Uh, but that's the only reason I'm not giving this a 10 out of 10. Uh, so it's a 9.5. This is easily one of my favorite films of the year. And like I said, it takes a lot for me to like a war movie. I love this war movie. Um, and I would absolutely recommend going and seeing it. If you want to go and see this, I'll see it again. <laughs> I have no problems doing that. And I never see movies twice. Uh, but thank you guys very much for tuning in. Come back tomorrow for when we have the final Gauntlet of Garbage and then the final Quest for the Best, 
Then we go into the best of, worst of for the year. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Come back next time. Bye. Bye.